Hi guys, Scott Snyder here and today I'm going to show you how to use and how to make this 3D printed Mayan spindle. This is the paddle spinner that I made and first of all what is a paddle spinner? Some people call them Mayan spinners, paddle spinners, there's a lot of different names for them. Basically you've got a shaft and a paddle and the paddle will revolve on the shaft. Isn't that right? So that'll introduce twist into your fiber to spin yarn. To attach your yarn onto the spinner, I'm starting out with a leader. I just have a length of cotton warp here. You can use yarn, you can use whatever you want to. And I'm going to make a slip knot. So I'm setting it over the groove and I'm pulling it tight. So now I have a loop. So I'm opening up the loop. I've got some roving here. I'm just going to draft out a little bit of the roving, tuck it through the loop, and double it over on itself. So it's doubled up on itself there. And now I'm just going to spin, spin, spin. Pretty much park and draft. So I'm going to set it down. Normally I'd set it down on my lap, but you don't want to look at my lap. I'm going to draft out a portion. I'm going to spin it. Park it again. Draft out some more. And put some twist into it. So I have a length here. So I'm going to butterfly it. I'm going to get to the top and I'm going to pull that slip knot out. Now I'm just laying it onto the paddle section up here. I'm going to start wrapping it. Now this one here, I designed it with two different places where you can park your yarn. So I'm just going to bring it up to the front one here and twist it around just twice. And that's going to hold it. You can draft out a little bit. Put some twist in it. Set it down and draft it out some and then put more twist in. Butterfly it. So I'm just wrapping it around my fingers to keep it under tension and then I'm wrapping it back onto the spinner. Now I also have a connection point on the end. Same thing. It's a personal preference how you want to do it. Put more twist in and draft. Now if you want to, you can spin right from there. But the further you get away from the center, the more it's going to be flopping around on the outside. So you're more likely to catch it on something. I really prefer to uh, put it more towards the center. So I'm putting twist in. I'm going to pull. Put some more twist in, pull, put some more twist in, pull. Alright, so the paddle itself is just 3D printed, laid down flat. I did a 50% infill on it to make it strong. Um, a 22 millimeter bearing that I pressed fit in right when I got it off the printer. Um, well, it was still a little bit on the warm side. I did design it with tolerances very tight, so I did have to beat it on. Um, Arbor press would have came in handy for that. Um, so if you print it out and you can't get the bearing to fit, just scale the pattern up a little bit. And I discovered that a Bic pen, a round Bic pen, fits perfectly into the inside of the bearing. And that's not going anywhere. So when you're done spinning, you can pull it apart. So if you'd like to make one of these for yourself, you can download the 3D files on Thingiverse. And the listing will be right up there by Audrey Hepburn. And also in the show description. Um, the next video, we're going to be making another one of these. But we're going to be making a more traditional wooded one. And we're going to make it as simple as possible. 
So my final thoughts on these. Are these my favorite spinners or spindles in the world? Uh, no, they're not. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that they're not valid. Um, I feel there's a lot of effort involved to get very little twist out of them. But if you have issues using a suspended spindle or, you know, a drop spindle, you know, these are fine. If you have a physical disability or limitation, you know, these things are perfect. Or even if you're just starting out, you know, this is something you can use to make yarn. Um, if you're looking to buy one, what would I look for? I would look for one that's not extremely long and something that's not extremely heavy. Um, this one here is six inches. I'd probably shoot for something between six and eight inches. Um, and that's just from an ergonomic standpoint. Um, six inches, you can hold it closer to your body. 12 inches, you're going to have to hold it twice as far. And um, that's going to put more strain on your body. Just like lifting up a heavy box, you're going to hold it close to your body. You're not going to walk around with your arms stretched way out. Just a little bit less wear and tear in your body. Um, I would also look for one that has notches closer to the center. Um, this one I designed. These cutouts here, you do a couple wraps and it'll hold it in there. The yarn can't fall out or escape. And on the end there's notches, a couple wraps. It holds it in there, it's not going to go anywhere. Um, so the closer you can get to the center, the faster the twist is going to go into your yarn. So that's the reasoning behind that. Um, if you see one that just has a blunt part sticking out, when you do that wrap, when you bring it up when you're first starting, it'll have a tendency to fall off. And that's definitely not a good thing. Um, you could put a half hitch in. That would be another step. It would take a little longer, and it still wouldn't guarantee it, it would stay in there. Um, that's my personal view. You know, your, violet, your mileage may vary. Uh, another thing to look for is you're going to want something that's parallel. That way you can slip the cop off when you're done. Um, and other than that, you know, just have fun with them. Um, if you liked the video, feel free to subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Give it a big like button. Click the bell if you want to see the, the rest of my videos when I put them up. And other than that, um, keep spinning. Thank you so much for watching.